Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Danielle with Dan Fancy Creations and today we're going to be doing another classic tumbler tutorial which is the hand painted marble. This technique has been around for quite a while. Um, I know that I did one of these when I actually first got started in tumbler making so it's nothing new but I do like to do tutorials on some past techniques just because I know that everybody kind of learns differently. They may see something in my tutorial that they haven't seen in another one that might make it easier for them to do. So it's just kind of like a combination of different tutorials that I think help people out a lot. Um, so for this tutorial, it's pretty basic. All you're really going to need is a few shades of acrylic paint. I typically just use white, gray, maybe black. Um, I actually like to use a toothpick to apply my veining versus a paintbrush. And then if you want to add some gold veining in there like I do, then um, you can pick up some liquid gold or just a gold leafing pen that we can kind of like get some of the gold out of it to dip our toothpick in. Um, and then basically whatever kind of vinyl you want to add to the tumbler. So this is a fairly simple technique again, but I feel that a lot of people um, like to overthink it and they don't think that it's quite as simple as it actually is. So hopefully my take on this tumbler can help answer some questions or maybe make things easier for you guys that may be struggling with this technique. So if you guys are ready to see how I do my hand painted marble tumbler, let's get started. All right guys, so to start, we're going to prep our cup and paint it white. You're going to need a sponge and some acrylic paint. My sponge, I do wet and then dry so that it is not so stiff when I am dabbing it onto the cup. And I do apply my paint with toothpicks. I do keep a paper towel handy too, just in case I need to wipe anything off. So I'm basically just going to dab a little bit of each paint color onto a piece of aluminum foil or if you have like an actual artist palette you can use that as well. I just typically grab what's handy. And we're going to dip our toothpick into the paint and I am really just going to roll the toothpick as I move my cup around. So if you twist your toothpick or roll it onto the cup, it kind of gives it that uneven vein look, just like real marble would. And I'm basically just going to do this all the way around my cup. Sometimes I will add a little line that kind of splinters off from one of the main lines just to give it a more realistic feel. And you guys can see I am just dipping and rolling. And this is basically just going to be the main veins that we're going to apply. We are going to go back in and dab them all. And typically I do this maybe one or two veins at a time, but I just went ahead and did the entire cup this time. But if the paint dries then you can always dip this the sponge in a little bit of white acrylic paint and go over it that way which I will do in just a minute so I'm really just going over the veins right now and just kind of pinching a small piece of the sponge and dabbing it pretty roughly that way you get that marbling effect next to the veins so that the surrounding areas are gray, but then the middle of the surrounding areas is going to be a little bit darker. And some paint does dry quicker than other paint, so you may just have to do trial and error because you don't want it super, super dry. So 
so once you have dabbed all of these lines really, really well, I am going to go in with a little bit of white, dab it off because you don't want huge splotches of white. You just want to kind of tint the lines to make them a little bit lighter. And I'm just going to dab this white basically right along the same path as I took with the toothpicks. And I kind of dab from the center out, lightening it as I go. And I do this around the entire cup. Going back in with the white is also a really good way to um, cover up some of those areas that you may not like before because it is just paint and it can be painted over and applied again if you didn't like a certain area. So after we have the white and gray mixture on there, I'm going to take my toothpick and dip it in a little bit of black and basically just kind of trace the gray lines that were already there, but don't make them quite as dark as the original gray lines or quite as thick. I do the black lines a little bit thinner and then the gray lines that are underneath is basically going to look like a second layer. And I'm basically doing the same thing, just going around the cup and lightly twisting the toothpick as I drag it down the cup. And I do this all the way around the cup and then we will go back and add some gold. So for the gold, I typically use a liquid gold that comes in a container, but it was pretty dried out. It was at the very bottom of the container. So I decided just to press out a few drops of gold leaf from my leafing pen that I have. So this will work. Um, you don't necessarily need to buy an entire jar of the liquid gold because it can get pretty pricey. So I just got a few drops of gold leaf onto my foil dip my toothpick in it, and then we're basically just going to follow along the same lines we made before. But again, same as the black, we're just going to do it very lightly because we don't want the gold to be the most prominent lines on our cup. We just kind of want them to be accent pieces, if that makes sense. So the same thing as before, just lightly dipping the toothpick into the gold and then rolling the toothpick down the cup as we go. And since I'm using the pen, I am going to need to squeeze it out like a few drops at a time because the gold leafing pen does dry up kind of quickly on the foil. So you guys can see that I'm not making these gold lines super thick or, you know, super 
dark. Um, they're just really accented along the lines that are already made on the cup. And don't forget to get your bottoms as well. We don't want the entire cup to look pretty and marbled and gold and then the bottom to not have any of that pretty stuff on it. So once you are happy with all of your lines, you are going to spray seal this very well. And since everything was already pretty smooth, I just decided to go ahead and decal it. I did not epoxy before I decaled. I just spray sealed it a few times so everything was a little smooth. And then I am going to apply my decal. So this is a fun SVG that I purchased from Etsy um, a couple years ago, I think. If it is still active in her shop, I will link it to you guys. I know it's a fairly popular SVG, so you may already have it, but just in case, I will link it below. And I did an offset for this vinyl just to give it a little bit extra just to tie in that black and gold. I always use transfer tape that has lines on it. This way it really helps me line everything up correctly and I use the top lines of the transfer tape to um, line it up straight with the top of my cup so that I'm sure that my decal is straight when I apply it. This uh, piece of transfer tape was obviously a little bit old because it took me forever to get this gold off. So I'm just going to line this up. It was sticking, so I used another little piece of paper to help me guide it. And then when I get it lined up straight, I'm just going to use my little squeegee and make sure everything is pressed down really, really well. And again, taking forever to pick up the pieces of vinyl. I really use my transfer tape until there is no life left in it. If you could not tell by this video. So once I finally have the vinyl picked up, I am going to take the top line of my transfer tape and match it up with the top line of the cup and smooth it on. Also, if your cup has a logo on it, you want to make sure that that logo is on the opposite side of the text, just so the front side is smooth. And I press everything down really well with the transfer tape and then peel it off slowly. So I will let this vinyl sit for a little while and then I will put it on my turner. Some people like to let their vinyl sit overnight or a few hours. I don't typically have an issue with my vinyl. You can seal it if you want to. Just be careful with what you seal it with. Sometimes my vinyl reacts to whatever sealer I'm using. So I typically just apply it to my cup and then um, apply my epoxy. So I am just mixing up part A and B. I typically don't mix for a certain amount of minutes. I just really mix it together until there are no striations in the epoxy mixture. That way I know that it's mixed really, really well, scraping the sides, scraping the stir stick, scraping the bottom. 
and then I will just apply my epoxy. I typically just dip my finger into the cup of epoxy and pull it from top to bottom. Um, I just feel like I can control it better that way versus just pouring it on the cup. And then when I get done applying my epoxy, I will wipe it from top to bottom just to make sure everything is pretty smooth. And it, when you're doing your bottoms, make sure you're doing it pretty sparingly. You don't want huge globs of epoxy on the bottom of your cut because that can make it uneven. So once my cups have two layers of epoxy, I will dremel or sand the top and bottom rims just to make sure everything is really smooth. I typically use my Dremel, but if I'm only doing one cup, which is usually what I do for tutorials, I just use my sanding block. It's a lot easier than getting all my Dremel stuff out. So I will just hold my sanding block at an angle and sand around the top of the rim. <laughs> it's pretty easy to get an even stainless rim around the cup. A lot of people have asked if it's difficult, but I don't think that it is. So doing this will basically remove one to two millimeters of paint, glitter, epoxy, all of that good stuff, so that you have a really nice, smooth, stainless rim all the way around the cup, which will ensure that the next layers of epoxy will seal everything in. You're not going to have anything hanging outside of the epoxy that has been sealed. So once I have everything smoothed out, I will wash it really good with Dawn soap. I do not use alcohol. I have always just washed it with soap and been careful with what I handle after um, I wash it well. So you guys can see here the stainless rim that is all the way around my cup. So I will dry this really well and then I will typically let it sit for 10, 15 more minutes just to make sure that any of the moisture is off of it. And then I will put it back on my turner for the final layer of epoxy. So that is pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it and realized that it may not be quite as hard as you think it is. And I hope to see some of you guys' creations. If y'all enjoyed this tutorial or learned something new, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to catch the next video coming up that was picked just for you. As always, if you're looking for more tips, tricks, or tutorials, be sure to check out my tutorial group on Facebook that is linked in the description. Thanks for watching.